So Hotsu, thank you very much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. But before we start, before we walk into the future, Hotsu, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Where did you grow up? Yes, um, I come from a, 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 a small town, which, well, it's no longer small now, but I come from um, the far end of, of, of Johannesburg in the east side uh, that is called Heidelberg Ratanda. Right. Um, it's a small town about 50 minutes from Johannesburg main city. Uh, oh, it's such a lovely city, you know. Uh, Ratanda is a home of 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 supporters, you know. Uh, right. It's like families, family, family, family community. Um, I remember how much they supported me when I was still, uh, when I was not even an Olympian athlete, Olympian athlete. You know, right. I had so much support just from the community who were able to see me uh, compete as a as a young passionate athlete. And tell us, uh, Hotso, what was your dream career when you grew up? Ah, uh, you are going to be surprised. Uh, my dream career was actually ballroom and Latin dancing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was, uh, I did ballroom and Latin dancing when I was very young. And uh, I was actually a national championship for, for, I think, age group 13 or 14, if I remember correctly, or even nine years old as well. So I was really, it was my passion, you know. Um, we were just young boys you know, playing in the street, playing soccer. And uh, one day a a dance teacher who happens to be my neighbor, back opposite at home, you know, um, and he approached us and said, why don't you guys come and waste your time at my dance studio? You know, we, uh, he, he told us that there are competitions, we'll, we'll go to, we'll travel places. And, and I think that that's what got us hooked into wanting to go to the studio. So... So yeah, when when we got there, you know, I became so passionate about it that I really wanted to pursue it. And Hotso, can you tell us who inspired you in your early days? I have to say that you know, uh, in my early days, obviously growing up with, I grew up with both my parents, and I think a huge inspiration came from my family because we were so close, you know, and being being someone with with this talent. Uh, kind of a talent in, in, in the family that that has never had a sports person compete internationally, you know, at the young age. Uh, I think my family quickly became my, my role model because, you know, they are the ones that actually uh, encouraged me, you know, um, knowing that, you know, there was, there was something that they see in me as a child. So I, I really think, my, you know, my mom and dad were, were people that played a huge role in terms of, 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 of people that were my mentors uh, growing up. But obviously there are other people that came into my life as in different stages, right? Uh, when I went to high school, my high school coach became my other mentor, you know. Right. Then she took me to the Olympic Games, you know. Uh, she's, the, she's actually the coach that, that sort of discovered me. Right and, right and and help my talent to to grow and her name was uh, she was a special lady her name is Elna De Beer. Uh mm -hmm. she's all the way in Nigel um, so I would say that she also remained my mentor uh, for a long period you know uh, of 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 my uh, sporting career and Hotso you are leading a very impressive uh, leadership career you attended four Olympic games. You won the silver medal in Beijing. You won the world championship. You won a number of African championships. Looking back over your career, yeah. would you say there was a turning point or maybe a number of turning points? Yeah, I would say that uh, looking back, uh, looking back on my career, there has been a number of turning points, but there is a, uh, one in particular point that that actually changed a lot of things for me. You know, it changed the character that I am. Uh, it changed my perspective towards uh, what is coming in, 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 
after after sports. You know, I think a particular moment for me was in 2012 after the London Olympic Games where I actually wanted to retire. You know, I wanted to stop competing because I didn't get a medal in London, you know. Right. Uh, and I was coming back from I was coming back from 2008 Olympic Games where I got a medal. And then right. it and now three years later in in London I didn't get a medal. So for me that was a turning point because I wanted to retire. And I wanted to now transition into a different career, you know. Uh, but I quickly realized that transitioning into a, another career was a, a, a matter of critical challenge for me, right? Because I've been doing sports all my life. Uh, and that's, I, I, grew, I, I grew to get leadership in, 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 in one industry, which was the, 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 the sports sector that I was in, that I was exposed to as an industry experience for me. That was an industry experience for me. You know, I was exposed only to that. And trying to navigate into the world of entrepreneurship became became hard because I knew I re, I quickly realized that there were skills that I did not have. You know, this those critical challenges that I still needed to solve to become a better leader to become a better person, you know, uh, to know a little bit more about different different uh, industries and different careers, uh, different career choices, you know. So I then decided not to retire after trying it for four years and I realized, okay, this is great. There's passion to it, but I needed to go back to, to my sports again and actually make a conscious decision to learn different things you know, at that period, again, to learn management, to learn uh, uh, the sports, uh, the business of sports, uh, to, to, uh, to grow my character as a person, you know, to be able to, to advocate for myself because uh, the medal does not speak enough for you as an athlete, you know, or, or even students uh, for a matter, you know, the distinctions, the, the wonderful report marks. They don't speak enough for you to go into your next transition or your next career. You as a person also have to develop yourself, you know, uh, uh, to, to be able to fit into that space. So it, it's a whole self-development that I had to go through uh, until I retired again for real uh, uh, about 2021. And Hotso, what would you say is driving you today? Today I'm being driven by a because I've learned so much through my sporting career. Uh, there are a lot of things that now drive me today, you know, and 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 that is being able to inspire other people, you know, being able to serve more, more people because I know that's 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 how success is measured, you know. Uh, according to my thinking, is that the more people I serve, the more I give what I have learned to assist them to be better than what we were, you know? And I think that's also uh, a, a very important aspect of, of leadership is to want to lead other people to be better than where we were, you know, uh, or, or so that they can become better. It's all about that evolution evolution of becoming better and better and better. And, and, and as leader, it's something that we need to uh, encourage. Now, Hotso, looking into the future, and I know it's a big question, but what does the future of leadership mean yeah. to you? Yeah, the future of leadership, uh, I think it's about uh, cultivating young people who are not only, uh, who are not only skilled, but also grounded uh, in character, resilience, having grit, and a, 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 a commitment uh, to a society, society's progress and uh, in this rapidly changing world, you know, leadership goes beyond uh, technical expertise. You know, it involves adaptability, you know, uh, ethical judgment. That's what the future of, of, of leadership involves and a deep understanding of, of, of industries that are different, you know, uh, understanding the communities that we serve. I mean, if, if we think about the future and where it's going according to the fast paces and the fast change that is happening in our communities, one will think that it seems like a very dangerous place that we are going to because 
uh, inclusivity will will eventually diminish, you know, because of the technology, you know, taking people's attention and putting it in their hands or in their screen. Uh, so inclusion goes away because you want to spend time alone on the phone or on the screen. So inclusion, uh, it's threatened, you know. Uh, and I feel like the future of leadership need to be able to focus on character skills, you know, uh, uh, skills where there's inclusion, people be coming together to be innovative, you know, to be creative so that they can work hand in hand with all these fast paced developing machine learning and, and so on. Otherwise we, machine learning will also become us because we're not gonna focus on these skills that are interpersonal, you know, uh, helping people. So it's very important uh, in, in a thought that future leadership should include inclusivity, uh, character building skills, uh, the togetherness of people so that the machine learning and the humanness can work together. All right. Now, Kotso, you just launched your foundation for athletes to transition into uh, their next career. What would you say? Is it, can you hear me, Kotso? Yes, I can hear you. What would you say do we have to do more to develop future leaders, to uh, encourage future leaders, and to celebrate future leaders? Yeah, I seriously think, I mean, there's a lot that's happening right now. You know, uh, yes, the, yes, the uh, uh, Institute of Competency uh, is a program that equips and empowers young people with competencies that that go beyond uh, uh, beyond the classroom you know competencies that go beyond uh, the sporting field you know uh, character character development that that is so important uh, and these are the skills that 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 I really think that we should be following at this point you know these are the skills that uh, young people should be acquiring uh, I mean the market will continue to be unpredictable, you know, uh, and there's a lot of economic pressure as well. So uh, I do believe that uh, as a globalization and economic uncertainties, uncertainties persist, future leaders must develop resilience, uh, uh, strategies, problem solving uh, skills to manage all the risk and, 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 and adapt to change and really adapt to change. So I think that skills like data science and, and industry experiences, those are the skills that are, are, are very important for young people in that, in that matter. Thank you. Now, Rotso, these are challenging times as the world is stumbling from one crisis into the next. What is your advice for future leaders in terms of challenges? What are some of the biggest challenges they should expect to encounter and hopefully overcome in their career? Yeah. So when I speak about uh, uh, Yazdi and, and saying that there are certain skills that uh, uh, we are imparting to the young people, we've also realized that there are several critical uh, 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 challenges or, or skills that our young people don't have for the future, you know, uh, which is firstly the exposure to career readiness. Uh, you know, we go, if we have to make an example, it happens that when our young people finish school and they go into uh, university college or, or technicon, after they are done with that and they've received their certificate, you know, which is, which is an honorable thing uh, uh, to happen, after they've received that and going into the, into the market, they, 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 they find a challenge where they are being asked, where is your experience? You know, uh, and one would ask, where am I supposed to get experience? I just I, I just finished studying. Right. So it's more it, it's a bit. And I understand uh, being a grown uh, uh, entrepreneur athlete today. I understand that even the industries are not they are not being sarcastic by asking for experience. You know, they also want to be able 
I mean, the world is changing. So they, as an organization themselves, they, the market is also changing. So they always want to have people that will always innovate their companies, you know, uh, hence they ask for that. So as Yazdi, we feel these are the skills that young people uh, should be equipped through our programs, uh, exactly what we'll be uh, imparting to them. These are industry skills to get skills while they're still in school. Uh, if I had this kind of a program when I was still was still an athlete, I think I would have had this program many years ago because I would have realized, you know, the, the scarcity that we have amongst our young people and athletes. And I do feel that those are the skills that should be imparted to young people. Now, Hotso, as a mentor to many future leaders, can you maybe share a success story or two where you mentored an upcoming leader and that person took your advice to heart? Yes. Um, currently, uh, there has been a few that I've mentored, especially with the athletes, young athletes. Uh, if I have to speak about uh, mentees in, in, in the sports field, uh, where a young man from, from school was doing high jump, And uh, his height was, his personal height was 165. And I coached him for one year and he was able to jump 205, right? And mm -hmm. my advice to the young man that he took to heart and told me a year later that it's something that he listened to. My advice to him was that st start visualizing the jumps that you want to jump every day and every morning. Speak to it, you know, and... That is a technique that I've always used my whole life. I always visualized uh, all the competitions that I'm going to go into, uh, the strategy that I want to uh, relive in my competition. And that quickly becomes who you are. You know, uh, it, it's almost like a paradigm shift that you impose on yourself. So this, this was one skill that he learned from me and he told me that he's still using it today, you know, uh, and that is meditation. And it's also a... It, it, it's a mental health way of, you know, uh, it's very mentally healthy to uh, to retro retrospect and, and visualize the thing that you want. Now, Hotso, looking back over your own leadership career, are there any role models of leadership whom you have encountered and maybe worked with that you would recommend future leaders should learn from? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, with my upbringing, Uh, there's a lot of mentors that uh, that helped me become who I am today in the sports space, uh, particularly in the sports space. Yeah, these are great mentors in the sports space, especially for young for young athletes. You know, they always ensure that they help athletes grow and they help athletes reach uh, uh, the highest points of achievement. And I felt that. These are the people that I should mention. Elna De Beer, you know, in the sports, who's still available to help athletes. Hans, Hansi, Hansi, Hansi is also one, one, one coach that is really important in the sports world. And also, you know, when we look at other role models, role models doesn't mean people that you see every day. You know, it could be people that you follow and uh, learn wisdom from, you know, uh, one, one in particular that will assist a lot of young people uh, if they go on the internet and they listen to books and they read books, you know, I would advise that they listen uh, listen to podcasts and tapes of uh, 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 David Bett, uh, Patrick David Bett. That's one person that will teach them a lot of leadership skills. Uh, listen to podcasts uh, or audio books by Wallace D. Wattle, uh, Napoleon Hill, you know, just to name a few Uh, I I immerse myself in that kind of education because I do believe that these days it's easy for us to get hold of mentors, right? Yeah. We can go online uh, and we can have a look at all the content that that is healthy for the mind, that helps the mind map new innovative uh, thinking. Now, Rotso, how can our listeners connect with you and where should they follow you? Uh The listeners can connect and follow me on, on, on obviously, on our my social media platforms, uh, being Instagram. Uh, it's Kotsomokwena. That is my handle, as well as Kotsomokwena on other uh, other social medias as well. And, and they could also follow 
follow, sorry, they could also follow our uh, our initiative that we launched on 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 over the weekend, YASDI, which is www.yasdi, Y-A-S-D-I.co.za. Fantastic. Last but not least, Rotzo, what is your message to the millions of learners out, so, out there who are looking to finish school, to start a career? What are maybe one or two success principles that they should keep in mind? The first principle uh, uh, in terms of when you are in school and you also want to uh, succeed. The first one for me is, I, I would advise them to, to understand that everything starts with a thought. It starts with a thought. So whatever, whatever they think and design in their thought, it's what they should lean towards and try to achieve. So my, my, my advice is design some creative uh, uh, thoughts that enable you to become the person that you want to be later in life and follow that thought you know uh my second one would be write down every goals that you want to achieve in the next five years starting today and these are not just goals that are monumental stuff these are also goals that it could be i want to become a better student you know i want to i want to learn a little bit faster i want to learn quickly quickly and i think for me, mental skills are more important than anything else because everything else originates from the mind. It originates from the thought. Uh, so the thought process for me is very important that young people should start getting. They should start thinking about the things that they want to achieve. And I think those are my two advices. Thank you. Hotzo, thank you so much for making time to share your insights and your wisdom into the future of leadership and for inspiring so many future leaders. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate this. Thank you so much.